Hey, this is Josh with Budget Mechanic. So with the second generation Tacoma, so 2005 to 2015, and actually some of the Forerunners as well, the intermediate shaft has a rubber uh, portion of it that wears out really fast, and you get this knocking and rattling when you're going over bumps, and it feels very similar to like an inner tie rod going bad. So a lot of people will spend money on getting their tie rods replaced, having to get their truck aligned, and it doesn't fix the problem. So I'm gonna show you today how to check out your intermediate shaft and see if it's bad, and if so, save a bunch of money on replacing it. So to check if your intermediate shaft is bad, you're gonna go under your steering wheel inside the truck and just pull off a couple plastic screws and remove a cover, and you can get your hand right on that joint and test it with the steering wheel. So to test if my joint is bad, what I can do is hold the bottom and turn the, the steering wheel. There's a lot of motion between these pieces. And also, if your joint's going bad, this knuckle up here will kind of flex and bounce around. And that's what's really happening when you're, when you're going over bumps, is that joint is, is slamming around because this rubber has become so soft, it's no longer supporting. So once you know that that intermediate shaft is the problem and you have a new part, you can get started putting it in. With the wheel removed, you can now get to this fabric cover and pull that off, these little plastic clips that you get the needle nose under and just pop them out. So I usually just do these two and then this thing folds down. Okay, so once you can see this um, joint between the intermediate shaft and the lower shaft, what will really help is if you can turn the steering wheel to get this slit facing you. Okay, I'm gonna turn the wheel, I, what I think is enough. I'm gonna bungee cord the steering wheel in place because now I'm gonna disconnect that shaft and the steering wheel would spin freely, which would be bad because it would mess up our clock spring if it went too far, the blinkers wouldn't be in the right place. Also, if I put it back in a different position, I'll be driving straight down the road and my steering wheel will be crooked, which I don't want. Okay, so the only thing we have to do up here is we're gonna remove this bolt that keeps uh, the intermediate shaft attached to the spline, 12 millimeter. Okay, now we can come back down here, pop these two off. They're 12 millimeter. So now what I wanna do is I wanna move this clamp up onto the shaft and off of the lower shaft. And so I'll get a big screwdriver and I'll kinda tap it in with a hammer a little bit to spread that flange. Just wanna be careful this brake line right here, pretty fragile. So don't get too wild. All right, there we go. So once we get the lower shaft away, then we want to actually pull this sleeve off altogether. You may pop this right off of the steering wheel at this point. This whole shaft may come up, but that's fine. There we go. So you can see this already pulled off of the, the splines up here, which is fine, because all we're gonna do now is pull this out. Okay, so here's my old and my new joint. And um, this is what's called the rag joint as part of the, the column. And the idea is that the lower and upper parts are suspended by this rubber disc so that any motion coming up from the rack and pinion is isolated from the steering wheel by this rubber. But what happens is the rubber breaks down, gets really soft, and starts allowing way too much movement. And then the metal parts start hitting and clunking and you get all that noise and loose feeling. You can even hear it here. Whereas the new one, the rubber is still pretty tight, doesn't allow as much movement, and there's a bushing in here that protects it from metal hitting metal. I messed this one up a little bit trying to do a budget fix. I welded in a, a metal bushing here to try to take care of that slop, um, but it ended up not working and the, and the rattle came right back after a couple days. So I found really the only way to fix this was to actually get a new part with the new rubber, which is the key to the whole thing. Okay, before I put this new one in, just want to make sure that my steering wheel hasn't moved. And now I'm going to slide it into the rubber boot at the bottom. Okay, so before I hook this up to the steering wheel splines up here, I need to go down to the bottom and make sure the splines at the bottom are oriented correctly. I need to match up the flat spots so you can kind of see how the shaft has a flat area as well as the lower one. That corresponds to the bolts that are on that uh, collar. Yeah. We just need to make sure that this is roughly lined up with this one before we attach it up top. 
Okay, so as much as I can now without twisting this, I'm going to pop it on to the splines here and put the bolt in. You gotta kind of find the position where the bolt will go all the way through. And I'm just gonna throw that on there. Before I tighten it up, I'm gonna go back down and make sure that the orientation is correct. Otherwise I might need to move it a tooth left or right. So now I'm gonna come down here and I'm basically gonna reverse the process of taking it out. I'm gonna slide this collar up onto the shaft and then I'm gonna slide this on. The, the slot kind of matches the flat areas on the shaft. So just like it was before. Slide it all the way up till I can squeeze this guy in here. And then I'll bring it back down, match up the teeth, which can be a little tricky. You just gotta find them. Lots of jiggling, and there she is. I'm just gonna make sure my bolts slot in properly and start threading. I'm going to tighten the one up top first. All right. Before I tighten this lower one up, I'm actually gonna pull the joint down to stretch that rubber joint a little bit so that it takes any slack out of it. So I'm pulling, pulling pressure down the shaft as much as I can and then tighten. Okay. So I'm gonna hook my shield back up, put my clips in. Coming back down inside, I'm just gonna tighten this lock bolt nice and snug. I'm disconnecting my bungee cord. Just as a note, um, try to avoid what a lot of people suggest in welding the two moving parts together, which bypasses the rubber, because that does get rid of the vibration, but also it eliminates the ability of the shaft to move up and down when the rack and pinion moves. So if you do that, there's a chance you're gonna ruin something else. So I say bite the bullet, get a new part. It's kind of expensive, it's around 200 bucks, but at least you put it in yourself, save some money there. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching, and as always, please subscribe if you like it.